Hey, what's up, guys? This is uh, Tariq here from uh, SmartBuyTrainers.com. Today, I have a special guest joining me from Boulder, Colorado. I'll be chatting with Coach Neil Henderson, who is the founder and CEO of Epix Coaching and also the head of the sports science division at the Sufferfest. Neil has an impressive resume under his belt. Uh, Neil's athletes have won multiple Grand Tour jerseys, Olympic medals, and uh, world championships. Uh, most recently, Rohan Dennis' victory in the 2018 UCI ITT World Championship. Neil, thank you so much for joining me here today. How are you? I am doing okay. I'm here in Boulder, Colorado, and uh, we, we in Colorado we have a shelter in place, like uh, I think a lot of other folks around the world. Uh, we are currently allowed to, to get outside a little bit, uh, again, using all social distancing. I've still been predominantly, you know, making use of the, the kicker bike here and the, and the kicker at home, um, though I did venture outside yesterday for an hour. That was, uh, I think, really the first outdoor ride I've done in a couple weeks. So. Yeah, same thing uh, we have here in Ohio. We're just sheltering uh, in place and we're trying to avoid going outside and, and just social distancing as much as uh, yeah. possible. Uh, Neil, uh, you've been coaching cyclists and endurance athletes for over 25 years. Uh, you coach athletes to world championship wins, uh, Grand Tour stage wins, and Olympic medals. Uh, have you seen anything that affected the sport the way COVID-19 has? Uh, I would say absolutely not. In my coaching career, this is clearly the, the single biggest impact across absolutely everyone in the world. Uh, you know, at different points, there's been things of, of uh, you know, weather related and, and whatnot. In certain locations, we had flooding here in Boulder back in, in 2013, which we couldn't ride outside for, for a good period of time. But this absolutely is uh, so far beyond anything else we've really experienced in in the the past few decades that i've been working as as a coach and sports scientist so the current outbreak is is making athletes question the effect of training on the immune system and depending on which study you look at uh, numerous studies have shown that uh, heavy or prolonged training sessions can compromise the immune system and uh, increase uh, the possibility of uh, respiratory infections uh, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, there's there's a lot of information out there. So exercise immunology, really, you know, the looking at the effects of exercise on your body's immune function is is really an entire field of study. Uh, there's really a good uh, recent uh, article that's been put out that is really a review. And David Neiman is one of the the top folks out there, and he's one of the lead authors on this, as long as, as well as Laurel Wentz and. Uh, this one you can find on, on sciencedirect.com um, and you can read through it and it really kind of lays out a summary of so much of the good research that has been done regarding exercise and immune function. Overall, there's what you know they kind of term a, a J-shaped uh, curve to, to this where um, immune function is going to be improved with uh, basically moderate exercise in moderate amounts. Now, for any given person, that, that amount may uh, be different. What's moderate for a pro tour cyclist may be a little bit different than what you see as moderate for uh, somebody who's normally only training five or six hours a week. Uh, but still, a lot of the research studies that are out there say about an hour of lower to moderate intensity exercise is typically where on average we see the best improvements in immune function relative to no exercise or very low exercise or higher intensity and especially higher duration uh, and the combination of high intensity and high duration exercises is, is very much comprising uh, uh, compromising the, the immune system so what about cyclists and triathletes that are still doing a long high intensity work should they continue to do what they're doing or bring it down a bit and minimize the uh, stress they're putting on their bodies yeah, my recommendation at this point is to have a, a significant reduction in both training volume and your training intensity. Um, as an example, you know, I, I do coach Rowan Dennis and have worked with him since uh, the fall of 2012, so a long time. We've worked together. Uh, normal training in the weeks leading up to this was about 20 to 24 hours of riding, and he's currently uh, more in the, the 12 to 14 hour range. So going at about 60% of, of normal volume. And again, he's in one of those places in, in Spain where, 
he's only riding the the kicker indoors uh, and on the train or out on the balcony. He's not going outside and riding. That's not allowed. And so those are some of the, the kind of shifts. And we've definitely pulled back on the number of days of high intensity and really made the, the higher intensity a little little bit lower, doing a little bit more some big gear work to keep keep things activated and keep things uh, strong and, and be able to recruit the muscles, but without getting as much of that cardiovascular taxing and higher heart rate uh, and higher breathing rate that you're going to get with, with higher cadence work. So uh, with cycling and triathlon races getting canceled for the foreseeable future, uh, how should cyclists proceed with training? Should we go on a maintenance mode or should we keep training assuming that we can possibly get back into racing uh, later this summer or possibly in the fall? Yeah, uh, I would say a, as a general rule right now, a little bit more, bit, uh, more of a maintenance phase for this, you know, most, uh, you know, I would say kind of at risk time where the, the spread of COVID is at a, a greater rate in, in many places. So you want to have your body as as strong in terms of both uh, from an immune side as well as uh, kind of that overall residual uh, reduction in fatigue that's going to come from kind of a more of a maintenance or even reduced training. I really don't find this to be a good time to be going out and trying to increase training load or make improvements in your fitness. Now, if you've come into this off a period of time, then it might be okay to be having some progression in training. If you were at a very, very low point at the start of this, you know, a couple weeks ago and are just getting back into exercise, but somebody who has been training consistently for weeks and months and is, you know, would normally be in a bit of a building phase right now, I would, I would definitely consider pulling back more and uh, considering this a bit more of a maintenance mode until things begin to improve across the globe. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Coach Neil, for being here and good luck with what you are doing and stay safe out there and uh, hope we can chat more in the near future and possibly even meet in person and shake hands. Yeah. Uh, how about that? That would definitely be good. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is we we put together a couple training plans, several training plans through the Sufferfest app that really are targeting this period of time where people are indoors and uh, trying to do something to stay healthy. And we call them our all in plans. Um, and we have a have cycling plans, multi-sport plans, even though we know people are not typically able to swim. We do have some upper body exercise uh, strength uh, sessions in there as well as there's yoga sessions that are in these to kind of really address your overall health and well-being without overstressing you. And so, you know, we have a few different levels of those available and you can definitely check those out. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Okay, guys, uh, please check Neil out on social media and follow him. Also, check out the Sufferfest and their month-long training plan they just released along with their month-long free trial of the Sufferfest app. So you can do the full plan without interruption along with other workouts they offer on the Sufferfest. And I will also post a link to my full review of the Sufferfest app down in the description uh, below as well. Uh, this is it. Thank you for being here and hope you enjoyed this video. And remember to like it if you did. And if you are still watching and have not subscribed yet, then you know what to do. Thank you for watching and see you guys in the next video.